Hello. Atlantis becomes more and more precise. The last video we talked about the riddle of the steely rings and saw that almost all of them could match Atlantis. A comparison of the engraving of the Toril Ravine at the site made it possible to validate the configuration of the ditches and canals of Atlantis still present in a blurred manner. We also confirmed the position of the entrance to the city from the hollow of the plain south of the Rio Salado crossing with the east-west canals. We relied on these adequations to find the trenches of Plato which correspond to the current streams which descend from the surrounding hills. From there, we completed the possible remains of the oblique canals, or when they are absent we proposed extensions, or a simulation based on the Atlantis of Plato. We will now try to reconstruct the rings of Earth by integrating them and comparing them with the dimensions of Plato's water ditches. We will end by proposing the location of places of worship and places of power already mentioned by Plato and the Egyptian maps. Let's start with the three ditches and the three earth rings of the city with their bronze, tin, and gold enclosures present in the texts. The ancient texts of Plato specify the configuration. Homer indicates that the entrance to the city is narrow, which is the case in our reenactment. For the ring ditches, there are the wide end mouths of trenches which can be combined two by two through the central Rio Salado. The landmarks three confluences with the Rio Salado, four six unevenness of the trenches in A, B, and C. Could these three mouths correspond to the separation of the rings of Atlantis soil by the ditches of the trenches? This could give the land rings corresponding to zones one, two, and three. Let us see if the dimensions of the mouths correspond to the ditches described by Plato surrounding the Earth rings. In the profiles on the left you will find in sky blue the zones corresponding to the six mouths of trenches on the map. The zones between the mouths are only useful for the presentation of the profiles but in no way represents the rings of earth between each ditch because of their orientations or spacing. The level profile of the selected ditch is set at an altitude of 20 meters for the two sides of the mouths corresponding to the edge of the maximum mouth. At the top of the profile is the ditch of the central ring, and below the ditch of the outer ring, in the middle the ditch of the intermediate ring. In the left margin is the measurements of Plato and their conversion. Near the profiles is the measure of the mouth of the ditches, followed by the difference in number and percentage with the measure of Plato. What can we see from the indicated measurements? It is not perfect, but the adequacy is close. The differences range from minus 41 meters to plus 182 meters. Say so, it seems important but reduced to each distance and to the times since its disappearance between minus 3000 and minus 11,000 years before Jesus Christ according to calculations, it is quite little. Two profiles seem distant from 30% to 40% on two sides and two different ditches. Three profiles are more consistent because the difference is between 41 meters and 154 meters between 11% and 15%. This is pretty little. The last profile is different from 133 meters for 24%. The average difference in absolute values is 22%. This last figure is questionable because it smooths the differences, but it has the advantage of giving an overall ratio of the adequacy of the mouths of the trenches with the ditches of Plato. Atlantis ditches found to within 20%, with minimum maximum between minus 11% and plus 39%, no one has yet done so. I'm not even talking about the exact configuration of these mouths which draw the arc of the Atlantis Earth rings in 1, 2, 3. Everyone can make up his own mind without going as far as a blind belief. The level and configuration of the suitability is very disturbing, reduced to a city that disappeared so long ago. The ground had to fill up and move slightly. Let's continue to see if the Earth rings thus delimited by the mouths of the trenches would integrate there. Measurements are made on parts of land greater than 10 meters above the trough of the mouths of trenches. 
Indeed, the mouths would be supposed to have received the channels at most 20 meters. The rings are therefore just above in my hypothesis and compared to the contour lines that can be seen visually on the map. Obviously some might think, and there will be some, that I took the measures, or it suited me. For the earth rings I tried to check the dimensions by bringing them as close as possible to the mouths. But I admit that I also tried to find the most indicative places of the place, namely, neither the largest nor the smallest. The goal is not to scientifically measure the exact correspondence, but to try to see if the dimensions are globally respected. Cities are often too heterogeneous to give exact measurements on each of their dimensions. Who could give 10 measurements from London, Paris, or Madrid to make them conform in 3,000 years? Here too I leave you to judge and the subject will perhaps be one of the most controversial. Ask the supporters of the other theses for current traces and probable measurements of ditches, trenches and rings. No one has produced as much as us. This does not constitute proof, however, but more likely clues in the consequent bundle already constituted. Heinrich Schleimann discovered the location of the Trojan city of the Iliad with similar methods. If I had found values ten times higher or lower I would have abandoned my thesis immediately. As you can see, this is not the case. Let's go on the measurements of the distances in brown on the map conform to those of Plato between 88% and 97% or 92% on average. For a thickness of the cumulative rings of 1.8 kilometers it is a difference of 150 meters. Certainly the rings are determined by the width of the channels that we have chosen. But we have unstoppable arguments. The trenches are still present as streams or canals on the maps. They are natural like the unevenness of the mouths present at an altitude of 20 meters. We did not twist the streams or the contour lines to stick to our theory. No site has made it possible to highlight measures and such a close fit in relation to the geology of a site. We will try to reconstruct the rings and their enclosures from the trenches of existing streams, existing oblique or even simulated canals, and the last measurements made on the mouths of ditches and earth rings. This is what we end up with. Amazing no. Let us position the temple and the palace according to the writings of Plato. Plato writes, The temple of Poseidon itself was one stadium long, 185 meters, three plethers wide, 90 meters. In the very center of the Acropolis there was a temple dedicated to Plato and Poseidon. Access was prohibited and it was surrounded by a gold fence. The entire temple outside was coated with silver. A trace on the ground can indicate the presence and the dimensions of the temple at this place, and a small stream marks a diversion towards this place. Plato specifies, Poseidon, having fallen in love, joined her and fortified the hill where she lived. They had erected this palace from the outset to the place inhabited by the god and their ancestors. The palace could be located on the hill towards the back of the city according to the texts. Plato uses the term Acropolis for the temple and the palace which etymologically refers to an elevated part. In Acropolis there is also often the meaning of the central part of the city since the elevated parts were often the center of the city which was built around. So the temple of Poseidon would be on the central part of the city's Acropolis, and the palace could be on the high part. The two places corresponded by the Rio Salado. This is a possible configuration, but we can also put the two places on the high Acropolis or in the center of the city. I took the riskier option, as you can see. Now let's look at the third place. What what third place will you tell me? Let's rewind a little. The one on the Egyptian map with three channels and three places. 
we saw the Palace of Atlas and the Temple of Poseidon on the Acropolis or in the center of the island. It remains for us to position the third high place of worship in the form of a pyramid with degrees or a hill with stories. Not far from there, the archaeological site of Pasito Chico has highlighted houses on stilts at the edge of the Gallo Lagoon. This site is just east of the city on the edge of the hill. The hill is fairly regular and conical, and I will tell you the intermediate level curves that I noted. The larger lagoon at the time could also serve as an annex port, as shown in the engraving of Campanario, to the east of the city. We arrived at the end of the location of the city at the Italia. The dimensions of the ditches and rings are similar on average, around 10 to 20 percent. We have given a representation here based on current geography and ancient writings. Adjustments may well be made if survey studies are undertaken. What do you think? Conquered. Skeptical. Critical. Opponents. I await your comments. In the next video, we'll cover the possibility of Atlantis being destroyed by a tidal wave. We will then conclude with a synthesis of our theory and subsequent developments. Thank you for your attention.